Hello students, Miss Swanson here, and today we're going to look at human organ systems. Now as you can see, there's many organ systems. We're going to go through each of these and talk about some of the major organs in them and what the roles of these systems are. So we have three learning goals for today. To list each of the systems in the human body and their roles. To identify each of the systems of the human body from a diagram. And to give examples of organs in each of the systems of the human body. So we'll start off with the cardiovascular system. Sometimes this is referred to as the circulatory system, but a little bit more technical term that's more accurate would be the cardiovascular system. And some examples of organs would be the heart, the blood vessels, and its purpose is to bring oxygen and nutrients to the cells of the body and to remove waste like carbon dioxide. It also maintains body temperature and pH. And so you can see a picture there of the cardiovascular system. Here we can see what's actually happening in the cardiovascular system. In the center we have the heart, and then on the sides the blood will come from the heart to the lungs to get oxygen and to get rid of carbon dioxide. It'll go back to the uh, heart in the center, and then that blood will be pumped either to the top of the body or the bottom of the body to give that oxygen and those nutrients to the body cells. Here's a close-up view of the heart. So we have the blood that comes in on the right side of the heart at the top, so it's called the right atrium. It gets pumped down to the right ventricle, which is uh, the bigger um, portion that's at the bottom on the right. That get, then gets pumped out to the lungs, where it gains oxygen. The blood then comes back to the left side of the heart in the atrium at the top. It moves down to the ventricle at the bottom. The left ventricle is very, very muscular and it pumps the blood all the way through the cells to all the cells of the body. The next system is the respiratory system. It contains nose, lungs, diaphragm, and so on. It brings oxygen into the body and removes carbon dioxide from the body. So here's an example of the human respiratory system. You can see on the right it shows a blow up view of what's happening inside of the lungs. So you have oxygen that comes down your windpipe which is called the trachea. It then splits into the, uh, here it shows the bronchus or bronchi for plural. And then the bronchi then split into bronchioles. Those aren't labeled here but you can see where it's split into four different tubes. Those are the bronchioles. And at the end there's something called alveoli, which is where the gas exchange occurs. So where oxygen comes from the lungs and goes into the blood, and the carbon dioxide from the blood goes into the lungs. So here's a better view of what happens at those alveoli. You can see that they're covered or they're surrounded by blood vessels to allow that exchange of gases to occur. And here's how that exchange occurs. So the blue cells are showing cells, uh, blood cells that contain carbon dioxide, they come close to the alveoli. At the alveoli, they give up that carbon dioxide. The oxygen in the alveoli comes down to the cells, and then we've shown those in red color to show that they contain oxygen, and then they go off to the heart to be pumped out to the uh, cells of the body. The next system is the digestive system. It contains organs like the mouth, the stomach, the intestines, and its purpose is to digest food so that it can bring nutrients to the body cells. So here's some of the main organs in the digestive system. You can see that the food moves down the esophagus into the stomach. It then moves into the small intestines, the large intestines, and then um, the waste go through the rectum and then out the anus. And you can see some of the accessory organs where the food doesn't travel through those organs, but they help with digestion. So there's the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas that all help with food digestion. Here's a close-up view of the stomach. You can see it has all these layers of muscle around it because it needs to churn that food to help bring out the nutrients. It also has special layers on the inside of the stomach so that it can produce um, some chemicals, some mucus that helps the stomach from getting eaten up by its own acid that it produces to digest the food. Here's a close-up view of what we would see in the intestine. So this is a small intestine and you can see that along the inside of the intestine there are these ridges that go up and down 
And if you zoom in on those ridges, you'll see that they themselves have ridges that go up and down. And if you zoom in on those to look at the individual cells, the cells have these um, ridges that go up and down themselves. So each of these have these little ridges to help increase the surface area so that more nutrients can be absorbed. The next system is the musculoskeletal system or musculo musculoskeletal system and these will contain things like bones and muscles and it has several roles, the protection, support, movement, production and circulation of blood cells. So here's an example of a bone and you can see several of the different parts and their roles there. So you have some spongy bone and then you have some hard bone around it and that's actually covered in cartilage and that's how our major long bones look at the end. You can also see on the inside there's the bone marrow where we have the production of blood cells. This is a zoom in view of the muscle. So usually we think of muscle as just sort of one chunk of something, where actually if you look as it pulls through to zoom in even further, there's several um, fibers within the muscle and those are made up of fibers and those are made up of fibers and those are made up of cells that are actually these very long, they almost look like fibers themselves. So muscles are made up of all these individual components that contract and relax together so that you can have actual movement of the muscle. The next system is the nervous system, so that would be things like the brain and the spinal cord, and its purpose is to send messages throughout the body to cause voluntary and involuntary actions. So voluntary actions are things that we're actually thinking, I want to do this, I want to move my arms like this. Involuntary would be, for example, digesting food. We don't need to think about digesting, it just happens. So here's an example of a voluntary response if we start at the bottom left there. So for example, at your skin maybe you touch something that's prickly and you, the, you have the sensory neurons in your skin that are going to send the message all the way up to your brain. Your brain will interpret it and say this is prickly, this is pointy, I don't want to touch it and it will send the message through the motor neurons so these can actually send messages to the muscles to say hey bring your hand back, don't touch that thing, it's too prickly. The next system is the reproductive system and so things like ovaries, uterus, testes are all examples of organs. Its main purpose is reproduction and production of hormones and pheromones. The next system is the excretory system or the ex the excretory system or the excretory system and things like kidneys or bladder and its job is to remove waste. So there's an example of one of the kidneys. These are actually very complex structures and they're important to remove waste without removing too much of the water from the system. The next system is the integumentary system. This is one of my least favorite systems because it's so hard to pronounce. Some people call it the skin system, but it contains more than just skin. Things like hair, nails, glands are all part of the integumentary system. So its purpose, protection, waterproofing, cushioning, removal of waste, regulation of temperature, attachment site for sensory receptors. So it has all these different roles and each of the different components are responsible for some of these roles. So here you have a close-up view of the skin. You can see that it has several different layers, the hypodermis, the the dermis and the epidermis and going through those we have things like hair and glands and we have blood vessels and so on so it's actually a very complex system. Then we have the lymphatic system or the immune system. Things like the spleen or the lymph nodes are part of this system and its purpose is to produce immune cells and bring immune cells to where the infectious particles happen to be in, this, in the body so that it can destroy them. So here's an example of the lymphatic system. You can see all of those lymph vessels moving throughout the whole body and they're actually very much connected or close to uh, the blood vessels so that those um, white blood cells or so that the, um, the cells that are used to destroy bacteria and viruses can actually travel into the bloodstream to help get to where they need to go and destroy those bacteria or viruses. 
The next system is the endocrine system. So this would be things like glands, thyroid, pituitary, adrenal glands. Uh, also the pancreas is another part of the endocrine system. And its purpose is chemical communication within the body using hormones. So here's an example of several of the different glands that are part of the endocrine system. And here you can see, looking at the pituitary gland, some of the roles it has, like water retention and blood pressure, um, protein production, muscle contraction, so on. So that has many different roles as it sends chemical, or chemical signals throughout the body. So let's take another look at our learning goals. You should be able to list each of the systems in the human body and their roles. You should be able to identify each of the systems of the human body from a diagram. And you should be able to give examples of organs in each of the systems in the human body. If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. Alright, that's all for now. Bye-bye.